Greetings and welcome back to CMST 275 at South Seattle Community College. This is Rebecca McCarthy, your instructor for this class. Today I want to talk a little bit about an assignment we're going to do over the next two weeks. And this assignment is tracking transactive memory. Now we've been looking a lot at e-memory and how e-memory gives us a lot of good things. A matter of fact, if we uh, consider what Gordon Bell has to say about the topic, e-memory has nothing but positive things to, get up, to give us. But let's go back to week one, where I made you, week one and week two, and I made you read uh, those documents from Plato. I made you re read the Phaedrus, and I also had you read some sections from uh, the Allegory of the Cave. Now what's interesting about the Phaedrus is we have an argument here against a new technology, writing, correct? And part of the argument that, that Plato and, if you will, actually Socrates presents us as a reader is that the problem with writing, or at least one problem with writing, is that we will no longer remember how to use our memories correctly. And we have to remember that in the ancient Greek society, they relied a great deal on oral tradition. They had storytellers, they had people who held histories, and this new technology of writing actually challenged that tradition. But Plato might have been right. That's the funny thing. He might have been exactly right that the problem with these kind of technologies from writing to e-memory e and digitalizing all information is that our easy, accessible nature of getting this information actually does affect our brain to some degree, our capacity to remember. Consider this. I was When I was young, I could remember just about any phone number that was given to me. And I actually still remember the very first phone number that I got when I was a kid, 2965608. I remember that really well. And that is actually stuck in my long-term memory. However, today, I don't remember phone numbers to save my life. I mean, it took me almost three years to remember my husband's phone number. And it took me almost the same amount of time to remember my own phone number because, of course, I never call myself. Why? Well, because I keep all of this information in my phone. And my phone stores all this information for me. And just in case I lose this information, of course, I have a backup so that if I lose the phone, I'm able to re-download the information. That's partly what I love. Of Google so much for. I can keep all my contact information in there and I can sync it up with all my different devices. If one of my devices should fail with me, fail me, well, I do have this fail safe backup. But the problem is, is that having access to all this technology to remember information for us actually changes how we think. And it physically changes our brain too. There's some very interesting articles um, about some taxi drivers over in England. And for them to become a taxi driver, they basically have to memorize, if you will, all the streets in England. And they have to know exactly where they're going. And it's part of their test. But now that they all have GPS systems, they don't need to memorize all that information. And they so they analyze, the scientists actually analyze the brain of old taxi drivers, that is taxi drivers that have all the streets and information actually in their physical memory, compared to a new breed of taxi drivers, and these are the folks who actually are relying on GPS. And what they found is the physical brain was actually different because they were actually using different parts of their brain. It's pretty darn amazing stuff. Well, the more we all use technology, the more we start to rely on transactive memory. So let's try to define what transaction me transactive memory is. Well, transactive memory is when we rely on an individual outside of ourselves or a machine or something like a piece of paper, a to-do list, something outside of ourselves. It, we are reminding ourselves of that information. This does not count for new information. For example, if you go to the internet and you look at a Wikipedia article on a topic that you have never known before, this is not technically transactive memory because this information is new to you. However, Let's pretend you've already seen this article more than once, but you just didn't retain the information in your brain. If you go back a second time to that article, then you are actually using transactive memory. So we often use transactive memory in our day-to-day -day lives all the time. If I ask my husband how to spell a word, I'm using transactive memory. If I look up a piece of information I already knew about on the internet, 
I'm using transactive memory. If I ask somebody to remind me to pick up the eggs, that's transactive memory. So you can see that transactive memory in general uh, runs a huge scope of different ways to remember. And we rely on these different things. And because we know we can rely on these different people, technologies, and so on and so forth, we just go ahead and give our permission, ourselves permission not to remember in the first place. Now, the problem with e-memory is if we're really going to digitalize everything and we're going to record absolutely everything in the world, how much more will we rely on transactive memory today than we did yesterday? Well, I would suspect it's going to get bad. Matter of fact, I would expect that our ability to easily remember pieces of information will diminish over time. So let's take a look at how transactive memory actually affects our lives on an everyday basis. That's what this assignment for the next two weeks are about. During week one, you are going to log four days in which in every instance that you can think of in which you actually use transactive memory. You're going to log the time, what the act was, and who you relied on or what you relied on to remember for you. Now, you will probably have well over 10 instances a day. So if I get transactive memory logs that show maybe one or two or even just five examples of a moment of transactive memory, I'm going to be a little suspicious about whether or not you're putting your full heart into this assignment. So just really be serious about looking at your life and how much you use this form of memory. You're going to log for four days. There's a Google document and instructions on how to do this is actually in our classroom. After you are finished logging all this information, next week when we do the part two of the assignment, you're going to analyze this information. You're going to figure out when are the moments that you are most likely to use transactive memory. Is there a time of day that you use it more compared to another time? For example, do you use it more in the evening as compared to in the morning? Do you rely on a particular person or a particular technology? I want you to go ahead and analyze all this data that you're collecting so you can have a better picture of how you remember and how you rely on technology to remember for you. And that's going to be the transactive memory assignment that we will work on over the next two days. And it should be interesting to find out how you remember. I think some of you guys might be surprised about how often you rely on others to remember for you. And that's it for this podcast. I hope you all have a great time trying this fantastic and interesting assignment. And I will talk to you on the discussion boards. Thank you and goodbye.